King Frederick and Queen Mary arrived in Norway together on the ship Danibrog, but returned to Denmark separately. Why did he return alone on the Danibrog and not with her? We will tell you in order. Frederick and Mary of Denmark made the first state visit during Frederick's reign to the countries most closely associated with Denmark and the Danish royal family. They began the visit in Sweden, where they stopped on May 6 and 7, 2024, and continued to Norway, where the state visit took place on May 14 and 15, 2024. In both cases, they stayed on the royal yacht Dannebrog, which arrived in Stockholm for the state visit to which they had been invited by their uncle Carl Gustaf of Sweden. However, contrary to expectations, the king and queen of Denmark did not travel by ship from Elsinore, the port where they docked on May 2, 2024, when they took up residence at the Friedensborg Chancery of Amalienborg, but arrived by plane. A week later, they did use the royal yacht to travel from Denmark to Oslo, and to prove it, the Danish royal household shared a photo of Frederick and Mary on the deck of the royal yacht in honor of their 20th wedding anniversary. The Danish king and queen began the day aboard the Dannebrog yacht, continued with a ceremony welcoming the Norwegian royal family, followed by a series of official events and concluded with a gala dinner at which Queen Mary chose a poire pearl tiara and King Harold gave a speech in which he addressed his nephew Frederick and told him that to be a good king he must love those close to him and rely on his family. The state visit ended with the king and queen of Denmark receiving the Norwegian royal family aboard the ship Dannebrog. When it was over, Queen Mary was seen stepping off the royal yacht in casual attire. She took her car and went to the airport to fly to Copenhagen, leaving King Frederick alone on the Dannebrog to return home by sea. Why was he returning alone on the Dannebrog and not with her? The explanation was simple and was confirmed soon after the Danish royal house revealed that Queen Mary received the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, the 11th UN High Commissioner for Refugees, in Alienborg on Thursday, May 16, 2024. Queen Mary needed to return quickly from Oslo and could not afford the sea crossing between Norway and Denmark, so the easiest solution was to fly by airplane. In turn, Frederick had no official engagements the next day, so he stayed in Dannebrog. The Queen presided over a meeting at Amelienborg Castle, where she learned about the complex work of the United Nations to protect the lives and rights of refugees from around the world thousands fleeing war, persecution, and climate disasters. Despite the obvious fatigue evident on her face after the long journey, Mary fulfilled her constitutional duties, a testament to the commitment and dedication she is showing in her new role as queen. Whatever the reason that prompted him to resume his official commitments so quickly, the style he chooses for each public appearance is news. After delighting us with six looks during her short stay in Oslo, Mary Donaldson surprised us with a boho-inspired version that we're not quite used to. The Danish royal published a single image showing the couple posing under the stairs of Amalienborg Castle with the two leaders. A shot that allowed us to see almost all of her style, .it, is a dark blue shirt dress with a spectacular zigzag print. The garment with lantern sleeves, belt and puffy skirt by a piece apart gives the look a fresh and casual feel. Perfect for summer days. Dot. Although we don't know how Federico, although if you want to give it an extra touch of sophistication, stiletto heels are ideal. Finally, showing off her naturalness, the Australian wore the now familiar sunglasses. A brown paste model owned by Gucci. Frederick and Mary's stay from Denmark to Oslo was brief but eventful. A total of 48 hours full of events and official visits ended this Thursday with idyllic photos of the couple 
strolling through the streets of the city like two lovers. However, the Danish couple is facing a new scandal. As the international press notes, after appearing so united and in love in front of the cameras, both returned home separately. Federico chose to stay aboard the Danbiog, the place that has become his official residence in recent weeks. In fact, when the ship sailed from the port of Oslo, he could be seen relaxing on deck with some of his crew. This detail once again called the marriage bond into question, while others downplayed the matter, justifying her hasty escape by saying that Mary had professional commitments in Copenhagen. In conclusion, King Frederick and Queen Mary's trip to Norway was a significant event that emphasized their role in strengthening Denmark's international relations and foreign policy. Queen Mary's return to Denmark by plane rather than on the royal yacht Dannebrog with King Frederick caused much speculation and rumors about the state of their marriage. However, as confirmed by the Danish royal household, the reason for her sudden return was related to her professional duties a meeting with the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. This episode underscores how important public duties can require sacrifices and compromises from members of the royal family, including sharing time to fulfill their duties. Despite her fatigue and busy schedule, Queen Mary demonstrated her dedication and commitment to her duties by meeting with Filippo Grandi to discuss important issues related to protecting the rights and lives of refugees. Queen Mary's style during her short stay in Oslo and subsequent events also caught the attention of the public and press, emphasizing her ability to remain classy and elegant even while performing her royal duties. While some may have interpreted the king and queen's separate return as a sign of marital problems, details and explanations provided by the Danish royal household dispel these rumors, emphasizing that their separate return was due solely to professional duties. So, rather than focusing on the alleged scandals, it is important to recognize and respect King Frederick and Queen Mary's commitment and work to their state and public duties, as well as their contributions to advancing important global issues and strengthening international relations. And so we come to the end of our video today, where we break down the details of King Frederick and Queen Mary's state visit to Norway, and learn why they returned home separately. We hope this video has helped you better understand the importance of the royal family's duties and commitment not only to their country, but also to the global community. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss more interesting videos about royal families, their lives, history, and missions. Leave your comments below what do you think it's like to combine royal duties with your personal life and responsibilities to the international community? Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.